Hey guys, welcome back to the Full Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Just want to give you a few thoughts after Michigan's 24-15 victory over Penn State. Um, as many of you might have been in the same boat, I thought Jim Harbaugh would have gotten the injunction, or Michigan would have gotten the injunction in time, and would have you know, been able to coach on the sidelines this game. But ironically, as I understand it, the judge wanted to do due process on it, so he or she, I can't remember which one it is, I think it's a lady, did not give a fast track and uh, give quick judgment and side with either side. They wanted to actually do their job. <laughs> How ironic that the judge, who is supposed to be neutral, is more neutral than the Big Ten was, as obviously we know they just passed judgment on Michigan without due justice. I digress. Oh, the game started, and it was just basically your classic rock fight for a couple series. And then the third time, second time actually, Penn State got the ball. They drove down, really good series, moving the ball. And this to me was, I think, the tone setter for the game. This was the difference in the game, really. You had, I think it was second and one. Second and one at about the six-yard line, somewhere in there, inside the ten. Might have been five, four, something in that range. And second and one, and Michigan didn't give up the first down on second down. They did on third down, like they did the quarterback sneak and just got it. Great. So two plays, one yard, give or take. Then Michigan did three straight plays inside, like say whatever it was, inside the five. And Michigan didn't give up one more yard. So for five plays in a row, Michigan gave up one yard. And Penn State settled for the field goal. Honestly, I thought Franklin would, might go for the touchdown there, but he chose the field goal, and Michigan gets a huge defensive stop. Five straight plays inside the 10, about the five-yard line, and didn't give up the touchdown. So that kind of set the tone. Michigan got the ball back and started getting the running game going, started to get some chunk plays going that way, and get the touchdown, right? Corum gets the three-yard, I think it was, touchdown, 7-3 Michigan. Three and out, I believe it was. Michigan gets the ball back, comes back down. Donovan Edwards with a nice touchdown, a 20-some yarder on third and 11, right? The game had really swung now. I thought Michigan had big-time momentum. And you got to give credit to Penn State. They came back, and on a fourth and six, their wide receiver made a spectacular turnaround catch off a, an errant Allen Aller pass. They also had a nice quarterback or running back to back to off the across the field to Aller for a first down on another fourth down and they paid it off with a quarterback run that was something that was really surprising to me how much Aller was running just from what I've been reading he was not much of a running threat but I think it's a symptom too where Michigan's defense for whatever reason really didn't get much pressure it seemed like every time Penn State was getting like four or five yards on first down, so maybe you can't really pressure too much. And it was just a lot of running and running and running, and the clock was going so fast. This game got over at like 318 or so. This game happened really fast. Uh, but Penn State scored. Now, this is your first Franklin of the day. He went for two. 29 seconds to go in the half. It was a... 14-9 to 9 game, and he decided to go for two to make it a one, to make it field goal game, I guess. And obviously, it was stopped. So it's a five-point game at halftime. Michigan uh, got the ball to start the first half, so they kick off. Penn State, first down run. Next possession, it's third and short. Aller's going to run for the first down again, but this time Rashawn Benny, the radio said, knocked the ball out. Makari Page, I think it is. Uh, fell on the ball. Michigan gets the ball about the 50-yard line. Huge turnover. What does Michigan do? They go on, I think, a 14-play, 48-yard drive, something like that, something like that, and chew, chew up over eight minutes of clock. It was all runs, all runs. In fact, the whole second half, I'm sure you knew this, the whole second half, Michigan did not attempt technically a pass, nor did they complete one. Obviously, the one to Barner, uh, was a pass interference. It was incomplete, so obviously it came back as a penalty, not an official stat. That did bug me a little bit, though. There were some third and shorts where Penn State was playing 8, 10 yards off Roman Wilson or Cornelius Johnson right in the slot, 
just a simple, quick throw to him, and he would have easily gotten the first down. I don't really know why Michigan was so afraid to pass the ball. That was kind of frustrating. Now, I know in the end, Michigan won, and so it is what it is, but I don't know why they didn't pass more. J.J., later in the fourth quarter, he was scrambling like two plays in a row, and the latter one, on second down, he gets rolled up. He twists his ankle a little bit. He's hobbling. Third down is a nothing play punt. And, again, now I'm like, okay, I almost wondered if we should have gone with Tuttle because Tuttle can throw and Tuttle can actually run. If J.J.'s limited, at least Tuttle could run. But they didn't obviously do that. I mean, I, did you guys see anything in the first half to show that J.J. was limited in some way? Because I know he got rolled up a little bit, a twisted ankle, in like the fourth quarter, I think it was. But before that, like, why did Michigan try no passes in the third quarter? I find that a little baffling. But the end score, you know, the strategy worked for whatever, whatever it was, right? If you watched last week's video, I was concerned about Michigan being able to salt away a game. And they kind of did. Don't get me wrong. They had, I think, two possessions before this, the final touchdown by Corum, that they had the chance to salt the way a game. And again, they like just passed on a little dump-off pass to Wilson or Johnson for an easy first down, right? They just ran the ball all second half, not one pass. So I guess you can look at the final score, and they did. They were able to do it. In fact, Michigan, if I look at my stats, had 227 rush yards. 227 rush yards against a team that had given up 60 yards per game average so i mean it was 110 in the first half and what oh, 117 in the second half right so i mean it is what it is you got the victory but it was a little two sides of it it was confusing why michigan wasn't passing more but michigan was able to run the ball against a team that was selling out to run the ball and you could kind of see that right you get a block here a block there and all of a sudden michigan breaks a 20 yard run the edwards 20 yard run he broke a tackle you got the Corum's, like, 40-yard run. Then the, the game ceiling touchdown was another, like, 30-yard run, right? When they're just playing for the run. So, I mean, whatever it's worth, Michigan goes into Penn State on the road, beats a top-10 team. Now, now watch, the narrative will be, Penn State's not really that good, so Michigan didn't beat anyone still. You watch, they'll say that. Someone's going to say that. But you go into Penn State, win on the road, without passing in the second half. I mean, that's crazy. So I really wonder, I'll, I'll be interested to see if Michigan, something leaks out like JG was hurt or something. Because coming into this game, I thought Michigan would be facing kind of stacked boxes. Manny Diaz, the DC of Penn State, liked to blitz a lot. And maybe they just didn't trust the offensive line. Because in the first half, JJ had very little time, right? The edge guys were, fall, were failing quite a bit, especially Barnard. I think it was 52 on the edge, kept getting beat. And J.J. is having to scramble way too much. So maybe that played into it. Maybe they're like, you know what, let's just battle this out and have the quote-unquote rock fight, right? And Michigan pulled out the win, so that's what it is. Now, <laughs> I would be remiss to not point out the fact that apparently James Franklin, who is quote-unquote a really good recruiter, is a very, very poor head coach. Once again, Franklin Franklin, if you will. They're obviously the two-point conversion in the first half why don't you just take the point why are you going after points so early it would have been 10 to 14 at that point then you have michigan there's like four over four minutes to go in the game and you decide to go for it on fourth down in your own zone at the 30 yard line when michigan had been not able to do really anything outside of a field goal in the second half and that's when michigan got the turnover right and they had a shorter field so you decide to go for it Michigan was already going to be in field goal range if you didn't get it, and obviously they didn't get it. So Michigan's in field goal range would have, would have made it a two-point, sorry, a two-possession game. Why are you going for that, right? I, I don't get why you would go for that. So two odd plays, too. Then the third one, which is even most idiotic of them all, they all just keep building, right? Penn State scores thanks to some dumb Michigan penalties. Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, the hands of the face, add 30 yards to Penn State when you thought maybe the game was over, but that ball hit the ground. I'm, I, I know it did. You're like, all of a sudden, it's you score a touchdown, it's a nine-point game, 
and you go for two. I, I don't understand how James Franklin doesn't know to may do plays to extend the game. If you go for two there and you fail, the game's pretty much over because it's two minutes to go. It's a two-possession game. <gasps> hi, honey. You want to come in the video? Come over here. Come in the video. Say hi. My daughter's here. <gasps> hi, Savannah. You want to say hi? Oh, yeah. What do you got? You got some little mermaid and you got a snake. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, let me wrap this up real quick, okay? So, <laughs> sorry. She's cute, though. Franklin, Franklin, man. What are you doing going for two there? You kick the extra point. It's an eight-point game. You're still alive, right? You're still alive. I know Michigan recovered the onside kick. Corum picked up that big third and five, ran out the clock. But still, understanding football seems to elude James Franklin. It's like he seems to not understand how football methodology works. It's just a common thing with James Franklin. He makes odd calls. It's like Franklin, Franklin, and that's what it is. All I know is Michigan got a huge win on the road, and couldn't be more proud of this team because they went on the road, find out their head coach can't coach when they arrive on the uh, in Penn State. Then they find out because well, wussy Michigan or sorry, wussy Big Ten tells Michigan after they've left. I mean, what a backdoor shift job or shaft job, I should say. Uh, you gotta love Sharon Moore. The post game interview dropped a few curse words in there, supporting the team. And, man, Blake Corum all bloodied up, man, how he got cut. But, man, what a game he had. This team plays for each other, and you just got to love it. I mean, take that, Big Ten. You tried to take this game away from Michigan, and you know what? You didn't get it. The Big Ten is going to try to do everything they can to uh, stop Michigan from winning the Big Ten. And, you know what? Michigan passed this test. So, you know, eat it, Big Ten. Eat it. Mommy. Anyways. Mommy. <laughs> Sorry. If you guys have any comments, please put them in the box below. I'll try to respond as I'm able to. As always, great victory by Michigan. <laughs> what are you doing? Thanks for watching, and go blue! You want to say go blue? Yeah, go blue. Alright, see you guys. <laughs> Throw the snake.